Good evening. Well, humbly living, welcome to my kitchen. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming. On being lost, welcome again. Lovely to see you. Pa Hesse, welcome. People are gathering. Gregor, Gregor, David Hill, Moon Singer, 13. Wonderful. Welcome. Lovely to see you. Moon Singer performs wonderful sonnets by Shakespeare. That's another story. Miss Quick, hello. Miss Quick, thank you ever so much for encouraging me to, to come back on and do more this evening. Hello, David. Hello, hello, um, Party World. Kilroy155, hello. You will do tunes, David. David Hill, hello. Are you ever so good? Now, I have a confession to make to you all. Um, that the last recording I did, the last poem from Drum Taps that I read, um, which is called v Vigil Strange I Kept on the Field One Night, my battery went at the very end. So I'm going to read that, that poem again so that I can get a you know, recording of it which will go on YouTube with the other recordings. What I would really like to do in the long run is to record the whole of Drum Tap so that it will be there for other people who would be interested in Walt Whitman, particularly in Drum Taps, to have it. So rather than have a piece missing, which will always irritate Aaron Brown, Aaron B. Brown, if I, if I had one poem missing, I'd be irritated by it probably wouldn't sleep right. So, without any more ado, I shall turn the, uh, I shall turn the camera around and we'll, we'll enjoy, we'll enjoy Walt Whitman together. Let me just plunk this, oh that'll do, that'll do. I think you can hear me okay. So this is Walt Whitman's show, and this is um, from poetry written in the 1860s in America, during the American Civil War, during and about the Civil War. So there have been a good number of poems before this, and this one is called Vigil Strange, I Kept on the Field One Night. So here goes. Vigil strange I kept on the field one night, when you, my son, and my comrade dropped at my side that day. One look I but gave, which your dear eyes returned, with a look I shall never forget. One touch of your hand to mine, O oh boy, reached up as you lay on the ground. Then onward I sped in the battle, the even contested battle, till late in the night, relieved to the place at last, again I made my way. Found you in death, so cold, dear comrade, found your body, son of reposing, of responding kisses, never again on earth responding. Bared your face in the starlight, curious the scene, cool blew the moderate night wind. Long there and then in vigil I stood, dimly around me the battlefield spreading. Vigil wondrous and vigil sweet, there in the fragrant silent night, but not a tear fell. Not even a long drawn sigh. Long, long I gazed. Then on the earth, partially reclining, sat by your side, leaning my chin in my hands, passing sweet hours, immortal and mystic hours, with you, dearest comrade. Not a tear. Not a word, 
vigil of silence, love and death. Vigil for you, my son and my soldier, as onward silently stars aloft, eastward new ones upward stole. Vigil final for you, brave boy, I could not save you, swift was your death, I faithfully loved you and cared for you living. I think we shall surely meet again. Till at last, at, till at latest, lingering of the night, indeed just as the dawn appeared, my comrade I wrapped in his blanket, enveloped well his form, folded the blanket well, tucked it carefully overhead and carefully under feet, and there and then, and bathed by the rising sun, my son in his grave, in his rude dog grave, I deposited, ending my vigil strange with that, vigil of night and battlefield dim, vigil for boy of responding kisses, never again on earth responding, vigil for comrade swiftly slain, vigil I never forget. How, as day brightened, I rose from the chill ground and folded my soldier well in his blanket and buried him where he fell. <sighs> and buried him where he fell. Pew. It's a... Um... Yeah, wow. It's hard to say anything really. Um, you see, Whitman knew, Whitman knew so many people who were dying, people who had, who died, people who, who kept living, but without legs, without arms half blown apart. I mean, Whitman went into the hospitals day after day and spent time alongside people. That was his war. And, you know, he, he was deeply affected by it. Um, Jew, Miriam, welcome. Hello. We've just been reading poetry, so, and the poetry was pretty emotional and pretty strong so welcome to a David welcome back um yeah it's true he doesn't break down in the poem it's true you know the you know uh, well Walt Whitman we're talking about Walt Whitman we're talking about an American poet um, who lived 1812 to 1892 or 1813. Um, you're very welcome on being lost, very welcome. And I think Miss Quick is absolutely right to talk about the courage of the poet. I mean, in this collection of poems, Whitman goes through a lot. You know, some of the pieces are quite small. Oh yeah, isn't that, that is a great one. He does his duty. Yeah, I think he would have felt that it was his duty. Um, George Wood, 56, welcome. We're discussing Walt Whitman's poems about the American Civil War. And I've just read one from uh, Drum Taps. Um, yeah, nicely put. I'm sure that's about... He did his duty. Oh, I can show you what Whitman did. Whitman wrote this book of poetry. This is Leaves of Grass. This is uh, Leaves of Grass. Um, now, within Leaves of Grass, the poems, I'll show you what, because it's tr a very good question, David. Thank you for it. Because um, uh, 
if for any reason you've decided, oh, I want to hear all of Leaves of Grass, let me show you what, um, there it is, yeah. So that's, uh, that's it, that's Leaves of Grass. The front of the book is there, and is it Christine or Caroline? Oh, forgive me, Moonsinger13, I, uh, I should be getting better. Um, that's uh, Whitman. The Drum Taps was a um, collection of poems which was then incorporated into Leaves of Grass. Um, there are, you know, other collections. Christine, right, I will, I will get that, Christine, thank you. Um, oh, Tlantaw, hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Very nice to see you. I'm, uh, that's Elizabeth. That's Elizabeth, yes, who lives in Dublin. Um, I could never read this myself and understand it. Well, I wonder why you couldn't read and understand it. I wonder why. The, the wonderful thing about Whitman is that I think it does not require intellectual understanding. It really doesn't. It's, uh, it's written in... The language that there's no use of fancy words, obscure words. Um, it's got a huge spirit about it, and that I think will connect with the big spirits that we have within us, the big spirit that we have. So, I mean, in a way, I think Whitman, you know, sang his poetry to. You know, an American audience, yes, but to a universal audience. Um, and you just have th you, you. I bring out. I do my best to to bring it out. But why does Whitman use blade of grass to symbolise his poems? Well, there's a good question and one to which I can't tell you the answer. Why did he call the first edition? Well, why did he call Thanks, Hal. Thanks very much. Why did he call it Leaves of Grass? Um, I don't know. If I ever did know, I've forgotten. Um, well, I mean, is it a is it a play on leaves? Meaning, meaning. Um, oh yeah, should be doing stuff about politics. Is it a play on? Um, Leaves of a book and leaves of grass. Don't know. The best thing to say is I don't know. One large field of life made of so many tiny moments. Oh, that's beautiful. One large field of life made of so many tiny moments. Aaron B. Brown, welcome. Look, I'm going to say goodnight to you. I think, you know, it's... Uh, it's a joy to communicate with you, really, and to, you know, communicate with the aid of the book, <laughs> uh, the good book. And, uh, you know, you can tell I love doing it. And I know, I really know that you love it. And uh, so I think we have a nice... Um, little place here, a nice place for us to, thanks on being lost, thanks Hal, I'll, and uh, thank you so much, and I'll, uh, well, I will do more tomorrow, promise you that, and thank you all very much. Night for now, bye bye.